colleague Ta-Nehisi Coates, who's been here many years. He's not here this year, but he'll be here next year. Um, Ta-Nehisi, when he had a blog, he would have commenters in the, in the bottom of the blog, uh, and he curated the comments so it wasn't just um, dangerous, mentally ill people. Um, and um, this commenter started showing up. Um, we went by the name The Cynic, right? Cynic. Um, and, and his comments were unusually smart. Uh, and and Tanasi noticed this and started talking back and forth with this person. And eventually, Tanasi would tell people around the Atlantic, I don't know, I think this guy's like a PhD or something. This is crazy. Finally, Tanasi figured out who it was. They, they, they actually connected. It was Yoni, who was then a sad academic in the Boston area, um, and who clearly needed a venue to express all of the things he was thinking beyond the, the narrow paradigm of academia. Is that fair? <laughs> uh, Yoni was on, Yoni's on, 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 on in, in a, in a tenure track uh, universe, and but he clearly had this journalism bug. One thing led to another, and and thank goodness Yoni made the decision to join the ranks of journalism uh, and not academia. And he came to us, and it's it's wonderful to have a PhD. It's a little bit. Frustrating sometimes to have a PhD uh, as your politics editor because everything somehow relates to Andrew Johnson. Um, um, but uh, but but Yoni came to us literally through the comment section of Tanahasi Coates' blog, and and we're we're grateful for this. I'll give it to Yoni for a second. So Yvonne, our fact checker, is here tonight. Um, Yvonne, that was largely true. Um, you know, every time I come to Aspen, I think back to my favorite speech that Abraham Lincoln ever gave, which was, just to validate this, um, which was to the Wisconsin State Fair. What he was supposed to do was stand up there and say, great pumpkins, you guys did great, you know, wonderful corn. Uh, and instead he gives this rambling, meandering disquisition on how great state fairs are. And, and he's really sort of describing the ideas festival. He says, you guys come here from all over, you're on your own farms, you get new ideas. You see that other people in other places do things in different ways. And then you want to do it that way. And you see that other people have done it better and it inspires you to emulation. Uh, you see the extraordinary accomplishments that people have made in other fields. And you want to do extraordinary things too. And this is the genius of America. You know, I think about that a lot because I'm thinking three things about education these days. One is we know that access to higher education in particular and education is becoming constricted. Uh, fewer Americans are, are particularly uh, from the working classes, lower middle classes, are able to get access to the kind of public education that once served as the latter out in this country. The second thing I know is that this was, uh, in some ways, a realignment election. And despite your injunction to stay away from Trump, I'm going to go there. It, this was an election in which the critical dividing line was education. Uh, and that was new. Uh, to a greater extent than income, your educational attainment predicted who you would vote for, whether you were a Clinton voter or a Trump voter. So we wanted to know more, and we went and we talked to nearly a thousand white working class voters, and, and we asked them a series of questions. And we, we ran with, with our research partners a, a bunch of regression analyses to try to figure out what's the one question you could ask these guys that would tell you whether they were a Trump voter or a Clinton voter. And there were only a handful out of our whole battery of questions which would really stand independently. One of them was, what's the value of higher education? Is it an investment or is it a gamble? Trump voters overwhelmingly said, it's a gamble. And I think back to that speech that Lincoln gave about what it was that made America a special place. It's the sense that you could go and you could learn and you could attain and you could achieve. And for an increasing portion of this country, people have lost that as a founding vision. And so one of the ideas that obsesses me now is how does a country that started to lose that vision of attainment and of achievement, how do you get it back and how do you reunite around that common ideal? Thank you. I want to sort of look through the room.